Now, as much as I cannot stand the Marxoid that is Tink Zorg, I really don't understand why Twinsorg. that person. I don't know why that person gets as much attention as they do. It irks the shit out of me. But a point that that person had made was like a lot of this is just cost of running a massive economic engine empire yeah. type deal in the 21st yeah. century. And I don't think I have any disagreement with that take because the elites in Washington know that the more low trust a society is, the more control you can leverage it from a federal level. And I just think that that's going to be the nature of the game because everything else that we see going on right now between the breathalyzer stuff, this mat, the last two years has been practice run for everything else they want to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking to myself, hmm, you know, like what a great way to have this malleable, uh, low trust society in every urban center in America where, you know, it'll be like eventually America will get to a point where if some major international sporting event happens, we're going to look like Paris, like we saw with the World Cup. So. I, I just think that we're going to see some really crazy shit happen in the next couple of decades. You're making me want to die. Can't we talk about something cheerful? Hey, well, oh, wait, 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 we got, got six hey, minutes Mr. D, Mr. D, you've got the white pillar in chief here, all right? You know, uh, Paul Positivity Fahrenheit. No. All <laughs> no. right. Well, this look, is a hey. in chats. Now it's Paul look, Celsius. Look, all right. All right. Look, fellas. He's all right, we're, He's we're, all, we're all out here. We're all out here sitting here um, uh, building up these, these, these behemoths of fanged Numina in our minds of all of these sort of you know <laughs> oh the federal the federal government the federal government is going to impose at gunpoint all of these restrictions in the United States is going to become and, and the world is even going to further extend into this dystopic hell uh, society fellas I worked in the federal government I want to believe I crude mods you, Paul I can tell you I can tell you all right now that the federal government is the least powerful institution in the United States oh my god you, you oh, can't no. you uh -oh. can't keep uh -oh. uh -oh. no, 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 I can no, no. Uh -oh. I can and I'm continuing to do so oh. because I'm um because right, and, and, and you guys you guys just don't understand how multipolar this world is I didn't realize this until I started working in supply chain um, when I started working in supply chain, I realized that quite literally everything depends on everything. And if one thing goes, everything goes. All right. You know, the, the entire fact that we have such a complex computer driven economy is just because we can source our sand and our lithium and our cobalt and all of our other various rare earth metals from a thousand different places on earth. I can get you sand. <laughs> yeah, well, you need a very specific, super special, awesome kind of sand. To melt down and put i don't know what i don't know what the fuck they do with it they turn it into chips all right you need that to make chips we're already in a massive <laughs> chip crisis right massive chip crisis supply chain crisis means less manufacturing less manufacturing means i'm uh you know you no longer have the means to manufacture it means you go analog you go analog right that means you can't produce jack shit all right when I worked, uh, when I was supporting various DOD installations, I worked, you know, when I was doing defense contracting a couple of months ago, um, the number one amount of problems we had were hardware issues. All right. And, um, and that's just simply because, and, and half the time we just didn't have the chips to fix them. Right. And this is, this isn't, this isn't like just in the defense sector. This is everywhere. This is everywhere, fellas. Like all of this, like super special, awesome control and like societal manipulation and things like that. Number one, it depends on a massive availability of computer chips, which is just kind of going the way of the dodo bird, at least for a couple of years, because no. you know, it's, doesn't, it's, doesn't it argue for reindustrialization? What do you mean? Uh, by real, um, doesn't it? We don't make it chip, for, We don't uh, make hold on, chips hold on, in the West. West. Mr. Semiagog, what do you mean by reindustrialization? Like, what what do you mean by that uh, inquiry? The same you same kind of thing. China. Same thing about uh, the the need to manufacture more artillery shells. Oh well, okay. Um, it's yeah. something that we're probably, I'll uh, hopefully, we'll talk to a prudentialist uh, about in the future mm -hmm. under the rubric of uh, deglobalization. Yeah. Prude has been very very patient with me in that respect, and I thank him. I've been screwing up on scheduling that, but the the point being that we've seen that. Um, for example, there are at least arguably, this is all unrestricted warfare as mentioned, as D was talking about. Um, so we don't know the truth of, uh, any particularly, a particular thing very well, or often we don't often we don't. And so we're not sure about what reporting that's coming out of the war is reliable or not. Some, some things are more reliable than, than others. Right. But however, we do have reports that suggest to us that there are issues with like standard high um, levels of uh, industrial production of necessary elements for conducting modern warfare, like 
crap cans full of artillery shells. And while we still have the ability to produce that kind of stuff or cruise missiles or whatever it is at different rates, um, much of our uh, native industrial capacity has been reduced. Um, and we're seeing a situation where it, it's literally a matter of life and death to restore it. So given that that's the case, I ask you when you say, you know, we're seeing these different things begin to fall apart. Um, and I don't think you're wrong about that. I mean, I myself have heard a lot about how, you know, there's a long ass fucking waiting list. If somebody blows a transformer, right. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you're yeah. fucked. Um, so I, I think what you're saying there is true, obviously, but to me, that would suggest that there's simply no other direction to go than to see a degree of native industrial production return, which is kind of ironic given Trump's angle. And well, you, you should, I hope Paul be able to see how that would fit in with sort of the theme of deglobalization, you know, as yeah. it moves away from one integrated system, you have the necessity for a number of, uh, independent zones, particularly related to, uh, um, maintaining secrecy around your own special weapons programs and things, right? That are associated with given okay, territories. Okay, I want to cut it off. Yeah, cause I'll say, I think, Paul, already. that's like the old Go Glory Club's thing, right? Like, that's kind of something. Have I heard you guys talk about happy that? Or? New nope, year. No, it's Happy Look, New Year happy again. New year, Look, Prude's, Prude's, Sorry, about to, Prude's about to end the stream. All I can say, and I'll say this. No, let's uh, the go Texas, for another hour. The Texas, yeah, another hour. <laughs> the Texas Triangle between um, uh, San Antonio Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston produces the number two amount of heavy machinery on the planet. Number one is the entire country of Germany. Germany is about to hit the shitter. It's about to cease to be an industrial economy entirely. Whoa. Um, yeah. And who's responsible for that? Russia for cutting off gas. Ju and Germany. Oh. Germany, no. for cutting off <laughs> Germany, Germany for cutting off its own fucking uh, energy supply. Look, and all these German companies, they're all already well, moving well, to the well, southeast. Well, well, Hold reverse. on. Hold on, I gotta spin a narrative. Before you start that Nick posting, let Paul finish. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. You're all good, man. You're all good, man. Look, BMW <laughs> has opened up several manufacturing plants in South Carolina, Alabama. There's plans to open one up in Mississippi, all right? To all of these large machining firms are coming to the United States, all right? Um, globalization, as we called it in the 1990s, they should have just called it Southeast Asiaization because that's the only real places... <laughs> That we really put our capital in, right? We didn't really. You weren't alive in the nineties. <laughs> I don't care. Great care. yellow wave. Of <laughs> and we're pulling all of our capital out of that, and it's all coming back here. All right, look. I mean, you know, one of the one of the upsides to the fact that we're going to see a complete and total. Here's a, here's another thing, another factoid here too, right? The United States no longer has the naval capacity to patrol the world sea lanes the way we did back in previous years. If we wanted to, we would be mass producing destroyers. Right, because that's what you need to patrol global sea lanes. Instead, we're building six Gerald Ford class aircraft carriers, which are great for absolutely fucking destroying nations, but are not great for uh, patrolling sea lanes simply because you put all of your eggs in one basket. All right. So if you see a collapse in international sort of U.S. Navy patrolling the sea lanes and U.S. Air Force patrolling the sea lanes, you see an increase in piracy. You see an increase in piracy. More than anything, you see a decrease in trade traffic simply because no insurance company will insure any shipping crates going through a super highly pirated lane, which means increase in shipping costs. Increase in shipping costs means everything gets more expensive because how do things get to places? Right. These Again, Roman wouldn't crates. this argue for uh, reindustrialization? Well, that's, that's a zones? policy point. That's a policy point here. And that's what the U.S. is currently undergoing. Right. Um, I'm just telling y'all what just the general effects are going to be. Right. I'm telling y'all that this whole world that we're, we're sitting at that has enabled this level of control over our lives is just going to fall apart. It's going to fall apart because it was tenuous to begin with. Right. And, OK, and so you, you're not you're that. not arguing that know. it's like going to get better. You're saying it's going to get worse is kind of what you're getting at. No, there. I'm saying I'm saying that we need to take the good with the bad here all right i'm, I'm saying that the, the 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 season of Fortnite is going to change and we're going to have different effects on our general day-to-day -day lives and we're going to have a different set of rules to deal with because we're going to be shifting into a different game all right dear you know, god that's this, the most zoomer way to analyze this. <laughs> i tell you 